And that anxiety leads her to say the wrong thing to Jesus, going, hey, tell my sister to get to work here. So anxiety uh, is, is something that really can uh, grip us. I looked up the, the root word for occupy, and occupare originally and, uh, means to seize. It's a, it's a t it, when we say that, uh, that something is occupied territory by a, a, uh, an army, that's the root of the word occupied, is to, to seize, it's to take control over. And then later it becomes to sort of just to, be, to have things present. But the, the, the older version of the word in French and in Old French and in Latin is to seize. And so anxiety seized her and basically didn't leave any space for generosity, gentleness, mm -hmm. even asking Mary, can you come here for a minute? Can, can you just come here for a minute? Can I talk to you? That would have been a much better approach uh, than, hey, Jesus, tell my sister <laughs> to help me. Don't, don't you care that I'm doing all the work? So she kind of, her anxiety didn't really lead her in the right way. So what we have here is, is an example of the two aspects of keeping the word and listening. Those are both positive. And then we have two versions of being occupied. Occupied in contemplation, being at the feet of Jesus, uh, proximity to him, and being occupied by anxiety. And those two are counter, those, those are two opposites with each other. Uh, so how do we, you know, so how do we uh, do that? How do we get help? How do we not have the, um, Anxiety take us over. Uh, even St. Paul had someone uh, and, and out a window, so it's okay. <laughs> it's good. It's good. So I want to stop there uh, to, to take some, just to get some discussion going. And then uh, there's more if we want, but I, I think that's maybe a good, a good pausing place. Just a comment about the last scripture you were saying. I, uh, I shared my take on Martha's uh, upset is also um, that seated at the feet of Jesus, like I know you know this article, but um, it's a phrase when somebody's becoming a disciple, someone is being taught in a culture that women necessarily were not taught like that. And I, that Martha basically was seized with how awkward that was in that culture. And it's partly feeling, you know, that you should, and you actually see this, there partly in some cultures even to this day, I can tell you, um, like among some of the Greeks, if uh, an older Greek lady sees her daughter not catering to her husband, the daughter will hear about it still. <laughs> you know? So even if the husband is seated like three feet away from the refrigerator and five feet away from the sink, <laughs> the older Greek woman will yell at her daughter, why don't you get up and get your husband something, you know, to drink. So, but the discomfort, I think, is in part is this idea that God would pull women into this partnership with him like that. And uh, we know from the tradition of the church, Mary Magdalene, St. Nina, Georgia, all these other women who uh, contrary even to some aspects of the culture, became, well, like Dr. Becker was saying about becoming occupied with, with the Lord, and, and the vocation to be in that partnership with him, which is ultimately what the Theotokos is. She ultimately fulfills the vocation that God always desired from humanity, which was to be in a partnership with him, and to bring, you know, do that which humanity would then be bringing creation itself back to the destiny God intended. But anyway, that was just something I thought I wanted to throw out. Yeah, so she would have been very much a counter countercultural oh, yeah. disciple, um, listening to the word which the men probably would have been doing instead of her. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a beautiful point. And when we see Jesus visit uh, Mary and Martha, 
in the story of Lazarus' death in the Gospel of John, Martha's the one that's out there and greets him. You know, right. she's, she's, you know, she's like the older sister, and she's, you know, uh, she's out there. And I, rec you know, I recognize that type. Um, and they don't sit still that often. No. They're, they're constantly being vigilant about helping everyone. Um, yes, please. Oh, hi, um, uh, Tyler. I just wanted to make a, a comment on, on how you had um, mentioned <clears throat> about being occupied. Mary, um, Mary being occupied with being at the foot of Jesus and Martha being occupied with the anxiety of, of um, you know, the serving that she was doing. Um, it, it reminds me, I, I've heard some people involved in 12-step programs refer to, at least initially, uh, someone who has an addiction, whatever it might be, channeling that addiction to another addiction, at least initially, something that might be more healthier. and. Uh, to their, their, their point in that context is that there's always something that we will be consumed by on one level or another. And you know, for the person who's, say, addicted to alcohol or drugs or whatever it might be, uh, sometimes that initial jolt that they need to start to separate from the negative addiction is to become addicted to something that's positive, something yeah. that will, will help them fill that gap. Yeah. Because you know, I believe it was, you know, Father says this a lot. Saint Augustine, who makes that, that claim that we have that God-shaped hole in our in our soul, and the only thing that will really fill it is God. Yeah. And so you know that that the whole point of being occupied, we're going to be occupied by something. The question is, what are we occupied by? Yeah. Are we occupied by fear, anger, anxiety? Uh, you know, whatever emotion might be, or are we occupied by the love of God? Right. Are we occupied by by His love that He gives to us that we are then to give to each other? So that, that's that kind of interesting contrast there. We're going to be occupied by something. Yeah. <laughs> the question is, what are we occupied by? <laughs> I, I, I love that, and I think there's a lot of a lot of truth. A lot of the fathers talk in ways like that that we're not. None of us are designed with sort of neutral, kind of uh, solid state kind of sta stability, uh, but we're always, the, you know, the fathers talk about um, we all we have we have um, uh, the capacity for love and for will, and that <coughs> that can go in positive or negative directions, but it's got to go somewhere. Or they also talk about you're going to. Uh, you, we're going to serve. We need to. We subject ourselves to good things or bad things, but we're going to subject ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's all of this. The human the human condition is is one which uh, is not very safe. Just staying fallow. Fallow is not exactly a safe state to be. Um, <clears throat> that's what Isaac was saying earlier about the, you know, the kind of war that's going on. Uh, so. Tyler, I, I think your comments are, are you, know, you know, your observations and reflections are, are very good. I don't, Father, did you want to follow on that or, or anyone? Um, Just a, a quick thought. Um, um, some of you know this, but uh, I'll repeat it uh, for those who don't, especially. If a church often is fortunate enough to have the same iconographer do all the icons in the church, one of the things that comes out is that the eyes of all the, the saints, the Theodoros even, and so forth, they're the eyes of Jesus. And that's very deliberate to see with the eyes of Christ, to see humanity, to see God, to see ourselves, to see others. Because when you talked about Sister, Sister Maria and so forth, what did she see? Yeah. And I think, like even here, Martha wasn't seeing, obviously, the reality. She was blinded by whatever the cultural mores or fears or whatever. And that's so often, I think, the issue. But um, the, one of the things that's interesting is uh, the thought, St. Athanasius uh, makes the comment that the natural condition of the human being is to be in Christ. But it's actually unnatural. And I, I can see that because when we are consumed or paralyzed by fear, rage, whatever, fill in the blank, <coughs> we're not expressing our full humanity. Mm -hmm. Not expressing our full humanity. Yeah. 
for less than. So the, you know, I mentioned earlier that our, our heart is the, is the first sort of tripping wire, the first kind of line of defense. And when, when, we, when our eye goes somewhere right. where we really didn't want to go, this, as soon as we recognize that and, and go back to help, uh, and that's where that first gets caught. And so, uh, let me introduce, but without getting out of discussion mode, let me introduce one passage from Philippians 4, which I think really typifies again the Theotokos. I, because sometimes when we read scripture within the festal aura, there's this uh, comparative bliss that goes on. And you get to see a transparency of the Theotokos and this text being together. The text is written by Paul. Uh, it's right on our topic about how we occupy ourselves. And it introduces for the first time today the idea of thanksgiving, which I wanted to make sure we touched on briefly. Mm -hmm. um, and also the idea of gentleness, which comes up in a couple of Paul's letters, and I think that's a quality that Theotokos totally owns, uh, her, the idea of gentleness. Who would like to read, read this one? Tyler, can you see okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia, and I urge Sintiki, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, who na whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone, for the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. That last was kind of go from the end up to the beginning, but it almost sounds like uh, getting, getting like a, a free... Uh, opportunity to go to Whole Foods uh, and, and at the bottom there and you just stuff your basket with all the good things that you can. Uh, I don't know if you all like Whole Foods. I did see one I did see one in Pennsylvania so I know they're here. We have a lot, yeah. Um, Whole Foods. Is it, you, verse, verse 8 there, you know, the whole, the whole list of things is basically admitting what Tyler was saying is that we actually have this space and we, if we don't fill it with good things, it's going to get filled with bad things. So, you know, bef before you go to, you know, the mini mart and get the Doritos, get, go and get some, go and get some good, you know, whole grain rice and stuff because um, you just you need that. But because he, he, and notice he stacks it. He says, keep on doing things that you have learned. Well, received, heard, seen in me, I don't know, whatever you, however you got it, um, please keep doing those things. There's an understanding by Paul in our anthropology, and I've seen it in other places too, is that our shelf life and memory for spiritual things is really, really short. We actually need very frequent reminders or doses, booster shots, we don't tend to go very long before we forget. So there's this, there's this sort of learned spiritual guru in Paul here that says, keep doing these things, keep practicing 
Don't think that you can be spiritual but do it once a month because you're, you're going to forget what you're doing. Um, up here, we have a sequence of things that um, he reminds him first to stand firm in the Lord, uh, but stand firm is almost always a corporate thing, not an individual thing, because it, it goes right here with uh, these fellow workers. And the other time that Paul uses this word, he also uses the, the co-workers. So this is a corporate term. Stand firm together. He's not saying individually. Stand firm together. Get these two together because they're causing factions and they're great people. They've helped me, so please help them to get together. And, and then notice this sequence.